Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to part six of Quranic Contemplations, where we're going to be reflecting and contemplating selected verses from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this time from uh, the sixth juz of the Quran. The first verse we're going to be looking at today, inshallah, is from Surah Al Ma'idah, verse number 13. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us about those um, who came before us from the people of the book and <coughs> they changed or distorted the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they distorted the scriptures and a consequence of the, a consequence of that is mentioned in this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, so for their breaking of the covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts hard. They distort words from their proper usages and have forgotten a portion of that of which they were reminded. And one of the lessons we can learn from this verse is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as a punishment for the sins that they committed, he caused them to forget some of the scripture. And this shows us that from the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, upon uh, a person uh, when he commits sins is that he loses uh, knowledge that he had gained, whether it was, for example, the Quran he had memorized, or a hadith he had memorized, or things he had learned about Islam. Uh, if he forgets them, that could be a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing him as a result of the sins which he's committed. Because in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that they forgot a portion of that which they were reminded of. And why was this? Because of the covenant that they broke, because of the distortions that they made to the scriptures, because of um, the sins that they committed. As a result of the sins that they committed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to forget a portion of that which they were reminded of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah reminded them of, of what to do and Allah reminded them of, of uh, good deeds and righteousness and worship and ibadah and they forgot that reminder as a result of the sins that they committed. And so uh, this also shows us <coughs> when we commit sins, it has a direct impact on what we know with regards to our deen, with regards to the Quran that we've memorized and other things that we've learned about Islam. Our sins affect our, <coughs> our religion. It affects our knowledge. It affects our faith. It affects our iman. And we ask Allah to protect us from sins and for forgetting uh, Quran and forgetting things uh, that we've learned about our faith. Um, the second verse I want to talk about is Surah Al-Ma'idah again, verse number 26. And just like we mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, where in the second ayah, you were able to stop at two different points because of the three dots that are mentioned um, or, 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 or written uh, uh, in, that, in, that ayah, in that ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. Likewise is the case in this ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah. <clears throat> in this ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about the people of uh, Bani Israel and how when they were saved by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala from Fir'aun, they came to Al-Quds, Jerusalem, but uh, out of disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal, they refused to enter the holy city. And so as punishment, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala He said, فَإِنَّهَا مُحَرَّمَةٌ عَلَيْهِمْ Then indeed it is forbidden to them for 40 years in which they will wander throughout the land and what you notice here just like we talked about in the second ayah in Surah Baqarah the, the three dots which signify and symbolize that you can stop are also here there's three dots before Arba'ina Salah and there's three dots after Arba'ina Salah and of course like we mentioned you can stop at any one of these points and depending on which uh, of these three dots you stop at the meaning slightly changes and this shows us the beauty and the nuances and the depth of the book of Allah and the depth of this ayah along with other ayahs which are similar so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, if you look at this verse uh, or, a, or this specific part of this verse where these three dots are it's talking about this area being forbidden for them the land being forbidden for them and this is this uh, this uh, information of uh, these 40 years. Now, depending on where you stop, the meaning is slightly different. In the first method, if you stop at the first dot, 
لأنه يسي فإنها محرم محرمة عليهم فإنها محرمة عليهم You are saying it is forbidden to them What's forbidden to them? The land that they were promised Okay فإنها محرمة عليهم And then you stop at the first three dots So you stop them And you say فإنها محرمة عليهم It is forbidden Then verily it is forbidden for them Then you say أربعين سنة يتيهون في الأرض for 40 years, they will wander throughout the land. So the 40 years is attributed to how long they're going to be wandering throughout the land, not being able to, for whatever reason, not being able to enter the land that they were promised, not being able to enter Al-Quds, not being able to enter Jerusalem. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the first, the first way this ayah can be recited. The second way is if you stop at the second set of dots, so you say, فَإِنَّهَا مُحَرَّمَةٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةٌ So you say, it is forbidden to them for 40 years. So, so the city itself is forbidden to them. They won't be able to enter the city. Okay, that, that period of time in which that city is haram for them, مُحَرَّمَةٌ عَلَيْهِمْ is a period of 40 years. And then you continue and you say, يَتِيهُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ they will wander throughout the land. Okay, what are they going to be doing if they can't enter the city? They will be wandering throughout the land, but they won't be able to enter the land that was promised to them. So again, it's these small nuances, nuances, these these small details. Allah simply stopping at one part or another of a verse shows us, you know, slightly different uh, meanings um, <coughs> based on where you stop. Uh, and finally, inshallah, the third ayah we're going to be discussing is the next ayah in this surah, verse number 27. And in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the children of Adam alayhi salam, Abil and Qabil, and how one of the sacrifices was accepted from one and the other wasn't accepted. And the latter said to the, uh, to the former, he said, uh, verily I will kill you because, because he became jealous of that person's sacrifice being accepted by Allah the person in response he says and responds and he says uh, verily Allah only accepts from the righteous from those who fear him and this shows us how regardless of how much emphasis we put into the amount of actions that we do and we are always trying to make sure that we do lots and lots of good deeds and know that a person should uh, do as many good deeds as he can what's even more important is realizing and understanding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept and who he actually accepts from because in this verse Allah doesn't say that he accepts from those to do lots of good deeds because the aim isn't the quantity of deeds that we do, but it's actually the quality of the deeds that we do. And so Allah says, Verily Allah accepts from those who fear Him, those who have taqwa, those who are God conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it could be the case that a person performs you know, 1,000 salawat or 1,000 prayers, and maybe you know, one or two of them were accepted. While another individual can pray just 20 salats and all of those prayers he'll be rewarded and he'll be multiplied in terms of his reward because he was sincere because he had this element of fear because he had this element of taqwa and this God consciousness that the other person never had and so maybe he'll be rewarded even though he only prayed 20 maybe he'll be rewarded as if he prayed a thousand or five thousand because of the quality of his prayer so here it's a very important lesson for us that especially in this month of Ramadan, sometimes we tend to want to do lots and lots of good deeds. And as soon as the month of Ramadan starts, we want to you know, go into fifth gear, you know, into turbo mode, and we start doing lots and lots of good deeds, thinking you know, we have to make the most of this month. But then we tend to lose the perfection in, in those acts of worship. And <clears throat> we end up wearing ourselves out. Maybe we don't really understand the Quran that we're reading, or the prayers that we're praying, or the things that we're doing. We're not very really conscious of uh, the, the acts of worship that we're doing and it's just important to reflect and, and remember that the most important thing is that we are conscious of our ibadah and that we are 
present and when we're worshiping Allah we're present in those acts of worship that we're doing so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our, our, our acts of worship and our du'as and our recitation and our salawat and inshallah let's make this the, the most important thing when it comes to our acts of acts of worship that we do them with the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept them not to reach a certain amount of of good deeds or a certain amount of prayers or a certain amount of Quran reading just for the sake of it. Jazakumullah khair for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.